Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for having this hearing. It's good to see all of the witnesses here, and I, too, want to add my thanks to Dr. Simons for his uh, leadership in so many areas. So look forward to having you in this new capacity. And, um, but um, like my colleague, uh, unfortunately, I have more questions for Dr. Sullivan than I do uh, for Mr. Simon or Ms. Handelsman. But um, to follow up on that um, weather ready question, obviously, you know, this is a subject that we care a lot about in the Pacific Northwest as we had to implement a new Doppler system. Um, so are, are you going to support uh, maintaining weather buoys and survey assist, you know, stock assessments and using all of that information and planning it out to a more robust system than we have today and making that transparent for the public? Senator, I think it's absolutely uh, critical that we sustain a, a robust observing enterprise to power all of NOAA's missions. As I uh, commented in my oral statement, uh, the observational data absolutely are the underpinning uh, of what we do. Uh, we have made some strides in the past two years uh, to set a better, clearer, and more transparent foundation under our uh, requirements and be sure those are flowing sensibly and well into well-designed portfolios of observing systems. Uh, continuing to do that and drive that forward will certainly be a priority of mine if confirmed. So do we have the supercomputing power to do that? We are on track, and uh, thanks in part to efforts that you helped lead, and we very much appreciate, and to funds that were provided by the Congress in the Sandy Supplemental Bill. We have been able to move forward uh, just in these last few months on our operational weather forecasting supercomputers. They are today already twice, have already today twice the capacity that they had uh, when we last visited with you out on the West Coast. We are on track to be on par with the best in the world in supercomputing capacity. And that is an absolutely essential ingredient to sustaining the quality of forecast services that we all wish to have. Well, thank you. I, I can't emphasize enough how important this is. And so we need, need to tell the American people if we have a resource shortage here uh, or, or whether we don't. But clearly, with the amount of storms that we've had and the impact and the loss of life, having NOAA have the greatest facilities, not hearing from the Europeans that Sandy is going to have the impact that it has, but hearing from NOAA that Sandy is going to have the impact that it had, and having people prepare for that, to me, is a uh, is critical mission for the agency. So I hope you'll keep us posted on resources. I wanted to ask you, the Seattle Times is running all of this past few days as stories on ocean acidification, front page, uh, not, I mean, it's the entire front page, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you will. And so I wanted to get your sense of where ocean acidification will be as a priority for you at NOAA. As you know very well, Senator, ocean acidification is sort of one of the, the creeping threats uh, of global change and the increasing concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Uh, it's, it's a very difficult problem. It's going to be a very difficult problem to monitor and provide foresight about to coastal communities. Uh, we have uh, made some progress in that regard in, in your region, as I know you're aware, with our ocean buoys and our harmful algal bloom uh, warning system. That's paid some real dividends to West Coast shellfish farmers in helping them close off water intakes and prevent slurping in patches of more acidic water that could damage the young oysters that they're trying to seed in their pens. Uh, so it's a large-scale, truly global problem, as you know, systemic in, in affecting the Earth's systems, but it's also patchy and has very patchy local consequences. Uh, we will certainly continue to work uh, forward with you if I am confirmed to make sure that we can put in place the right sorts of observing and forecasting and monitoring systems to help us be as alert and aware and provide as much foresight as possible on this condition. So, that, so you will develop... Uh sensors in critical areas, you will continue to do research, you will continue to deploy um, adaptive breeding programs, recommend management. Within the resources available to us, Senator, we certainly will do that. All of those are components of our current ocean acidification program, as you know. Okay. Within resources, that's, a, uh, that's an interesting way of phrasing it. I, I guess I would say uh, we had to come up with the resources to get that initial program that you just said pays dividends. And uh, without it, I think, you know, probably three or four or five generations of families of shellfish growers, you know, would have been wiped out. And we grow something like 25% of the shellfish in one bay mm -hmm. in our state. So this is a very serious issue. So I hope we can uh, not predicate it based on 
resources, but on the urgency to uh, for this industry and for the resources to have the information. Let me let me turn to one related aspect of that because my time is almost out, and that is NOAA uh, research fleet and the fact that uh, NOAA needs to have additional vessels. So do you uh, support moving ahead on replacing these uh, aging vessels and making sure that NOAA has a, a fleet of research information that is necessary to do its job and responsibility? I do support that, Senator. It's quite imperative. Every analysis that's been done over the last years of the Federal Oceanographic Fleet, including NOAA's assets, show a very precipitous decline within the next 10 or so years if we don't begin to reinvest in these very critical capital assets. Uh, we've been doing the planning and preparation within NOAA to move on those fronts uh, and look forward to working with you to achieve that. So that will be one of your priorities? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. I see my time is out, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.